Hey, Rainmaker. Welcome back to another episode of the Rainmaker Family Show. Today, I'm going to be talking about something personal. And honestly, I was thinking about it in preparation for this episode. And I don't think I've ever talked about this publicly. I think I might have snuck it in there maybe once or twice if you've been through our Family Freedom Challenge, but it's something I've like never talked about, but it's something I'm rediscovering as an adult and as an adult entrepreneur and how I think it's actually a superpower of mine. So today we're going to get into a very personal episode, something very vulnerable that I've like kept hidden for a long time, but I'm excited to jump in. I'm not an expert on this topic. It's very much out of a place of me learning. Um, so you're probably wondering, what are you talking about? So I'm going to jump right in. So this is going to be titled Dyslexia, My Secret Weapon in Business. And if you've never heard the term dyslexia, let me just break it down for you, what that actually is, how it's affected me. I'm going to share with you uh, how I found out that I was dyslexic, uh, what that was like growing up, and how that's really shaped me into the person I am today and how I'm using it as a superpower in our business. And in researching more about this now as an adult, I realized that actually 20% of adults have dyslexia. So chances are either maybe you're dyslexic or you know somebody who is, and it's a superpower. And I want to lean into that. And I want to share with you about how I'm leaning into that this year. And you might have heard the word dyslexia, but it just simply means that my brain has a special way of seeing the world. Um, and yes, this does apply to letters and words, patterns and language, which I think is what it's known for. Like, I don't know, I feel like even people have joked around like, haha, I'm dyslexic. Like I get my A's and B's mixed up. I say this before that. And that's a part of it. But as I've dove into, it's not just like a grammar thing, but it affects, it can affect other areas as well, um, especially if you don't know how to make them your superpower. Dyslexia definitely varies in individuals, and it's definitely a lifelong thing that goes with you, uh, but with the right support, strategies, interventions, individuals with dyslexia can achieve great success. And if you look at entrepreneurs, some top level CEOs, they actually have dyslexia. And I remember learning about that as a kid, like my mom would be like, oh, this person, like they have dyslexia too, to try and like pump me up. But really as an adult, I'm like, wow, like look at my life, look at the things that I've accomplished. Look how when I have leaned into this, those dyslexia, neurodivergent superpowers that I have, look at our business and see how it's grown. So some of the names that you might know that have dyslexia, Steve Jobs had it, Damon John, the founder of FUBU, an investor in Shark Tank, Tommy Hilfiger, the world-renowned fashion designer, as well as Barbara Cochran, who is another Shark Tank investor. So those are just a few names that you and I both might know that have dyslexia, but I want to bring you back and kind of share with you my own dyslexia story as a kid. And I was actually having a conversation over the holidays with my parents about being dyslexic. And I started telling them like, hey, like, and I've always said, like, I'm so grateful for you guys. My parents really advocated for me, especially in a world where there wasn't a lot of social media and resources out there at all about dyslexia. Like my parents had no idea how to help me. And it really was like a God story on how they found out what dyslexia was and even like the program and the center that I went to. And so I'm really grateful. I think that's something that I think about often with our boys as we're raising them and just it's so important to be an advocate for your kids. My parents totally did that. But basically, when I was around like five or six years old, I have an older brother and he is very smart and he loves reading. He always did as a kid. And so when it came time for me to start reading, my parents just noticed that I struggled. Like I would get frustrated super easily, like learning basic phonics. Like I, I literally couldn't do it. And so going from my older brother, who that came very naturally to, almost excelled in that. And then to me, I think it just started creating those red flags, probably those intuitions that all parents have, my parents were experiencing. And I don't know all the ins and outs of the details, but basically there's another family uh, who we had crossed paths with who had kind of started sharing about their own kids having dyslexia. And my dad was at like a game for one of my brothers one time, and he heard these parents discussing uh, some reading difficulties that their kids were having. And so my dad like tuned in, leaned in 
and started asking more questions. And they said, like, yes, our kids have dyslexia. And so my dad literally wrote down information on different resources that were available out there to even get tested on if I had dyslexia or not. So I did formally get tested. I think it was for the school district that I was at. And um, I think for about six months, my parents then did some more research and found like an eye therapy place um, about an hour and a half from me. My mom drove me twice a month for I think almost a, it might have been six months to a year. I'm not really sure. And I would go do reading exercises on the computer. Things like I would look at a screen and there'd be like two points of contact and I would have to bring them together with my eyes and have them focus. And then when I did that, um, you know, it was just like computer exercises to get my like eyes connected to my brain to like focus and connect. And that was what I did. And I was also given homework and I hated it. And then on top of that, like I, um, in fourth grade, I was homeschooled until I was in fourth grade. And when I was in fourth grade, I was getting pulled out of like language arts time to go to another school district and do eye therapy. And I did that for two years. And all throughout that process, like I excelled, I did well. And I think the goal really for my parents and the goal as a young kid is like to be able to read and write because I think when you think about dyslexia, you think about grammar specifically. And that's like one of the skills that like I needed. I needed that to like function in the world and to pass tests and to be in school. So that was really like the goal as a kid was like, let's get her to read and write and to not fumble over her words while she's reading out loud. So those are kind of the practical things that I had to do as a kid. But I would say like on the emotional front, like I... I think there are a lot of emotions and probably trauma, <laughs> if I'm being honest, that came with being dyslexic as a kid. Kids in general, I feel like you don't really want to be singled out and looked at as like the problem or I have this issue. And I definitely felt that way as a kid. I remember when I went from being homeschooled to going to this private school. As I was being pulled out from language arts, I would have like different peers ask me like, where are you going? Why are you getting pulled out? And I would explain to them, I'm dyslexic. I have a reading disability, but it never felt good. And I remember like being in fourth and fifth grade and reading out loud as a class, like, you know how you would kind of popcorn the room and everyone would take turns reading. I hated that. I hated that. And I feel like all the way into like college, like, I had more confidence then, but I would still feel those same feelings that I did as a kid. Like, oh my gosh, I'm going to mess up a word. And I would say like elementary years, like it probably affected me more than I realized, um, which was hard. But I think it also had, as I look back, like it also instilled in me like an incredible worth ethic because I knew I had to work harder than other kids. I knew I had to study more. And it just instilled me this drive that in a lot of ways, I think, propelled me into entrepreneurship. And it was like, I want to be the best. Like, I want to show that I'm not stupid, that I'm not dumb. Like, those are things that I think a lot of dyslexic kids feel. And recently, I was even listening to a podcast where two adult educators were talking about kids with dyslexia. And they were saying that kids with dyslexia, it's like when it comes to certain things like grammar that they struggle in, they just feel stupid. But then when you ask them to do a more creative project, they actually excel and feel like the smartest kid in the room because they can see things and interact. And there's like this whole level of creativity that some kids don't experience because of the way that our brains are wired. And I remember listening to that episode and be like, that's me. Like as I've dove in more into like what it means to have dyslexia as an adult, even like. I've listened to several podcast interviews and I've like cried listening to them because the way that they described parts of my childhood could not be more true in that. So I've kind of shared with you like my dyslexia journey as a kid. And honestly, after those two years in fourth and fifth grade of reading therapy, I kind of got like the golden ticket. I was handed the golden ticket and I basically meant like, we've done all that we can for you. You're now reading and writing. Like, you're good. We can like send you into the world. That's kind of like what it was. It was just like, all right, you're good to go. You don't need to be in like a special ed class or anything like that. Like you are good, which felt amazing. It was like, oh, 
is this behind me? I'm never going to have to deal with it, you know? And, and of course, like in junior high and into high school, into college, grammar has never been my strength. Um, even if you follow me now, you might follow me on social media. And from time to time, there are spelling errors in my posts. There have always been spelling errors in emails that I write. That's just kind of like how my brain works. Grammar is not a strong suit of mine. So as a kid, I was kind of handed that golden ticket and being like, we have helped you all that we can in fourth and fifth grade. Um, that's when I did that reading therapy that was more intensive. And after that, I was kind of given like the stamp of approval, like you can read, you can write, you can be released into the world and you're going to do great. And that was like a huge confidence booster that I had sort of graduated out of this program. I, I was grateful that I never had to do any special ed or any additional training. But I really, at that point, like the treatment was focused on that. And that's kind of like where I ended with dyslexia. And I would say in junior high and high school, I really, I tried to avoid the fact that I did have dyslexia. I knew that I did. And obviously my mom was always helping me proofread my papers. And oftentimes like you'd read sentences in my papers that just like wouldn't make sense. And that's totally how like a dyslexic brain can like work. So I knew that it was still a part of like my journey in school, but I kind of like ended there. And more recently, I've been digging into this because dyslexia is not something that just goes away. And I really wanted to focus on like how how is dyslexia affecting me both negatively and positively now as an adult. And so that's really led me on this journey to kind of start talking more about dyslexia now. And you might be asking like, Chelsea, like, why haven't you talked about this before? And honestly, like, it really was like, I thought I was like, done. Like, I thought like, I'm skilled enough in grammar and writing. But recently, um, Steve and I have been talking a lot about like, ADHD and neurodivergence, and especially in this whole last year of going on a health journey, which you can listen to an earlier episode of that where I dove more into it. I just like have become more aware of like, what are my strengths and how can I lean into them more? And so dyslexia kind of popped up. And so I started going down this whole like dyslexia rabbit hole. And I started finding all these things about dyslexia and how not only is it like this grammar thing that most people see it as, but it's also like can affect other areas. And so it's really important to like understand those and how to lean into those. So what is dyslexia really about? Because it's more than just letters being mixed up. It affects more than just reading. It's a whole different way of thinking. And I think for me, that's been a big aha moment as I've started thinking more about dyslexia and thinking about my past and how do I work and how do I operate? You know, we, we send our team through all these like strength finders and disc tests to figure out personalities. And I'm like, I need to be thinking about my dyslexia and being a neurodivergent individual. How can I use those strengths as my superpowers and lean into them more than ever? I think, you know, in business, like Steve and I talk all the time about outsourcing your weaknesses, outsourcing your weaknesses. And because I know that I have dyslexia, it's like, okay, what are the top things that only I can do? And how can I have people around us in the business supporting me? in this dyslexia phase. So before I jump into dyslexia and the amazing superpower that it is, I want to break three myths about it. So myth number one, dyslexia just means reversing letters. And dyslexia is more complex. It's about the, how the brain processes written and spoken language, not just mixing up letters. Myth number two, people with dyslexia can't read. That's totally false. People with dyslexia can read. They might just use different strategies or need more time. I've seen that for me. I'm a slow reader and it's definitely a spectrum. So everyone's experiences is different. And then myth number three, dyslexia only affects reading. That's false. Dyslexia can impact writing, spelling, and even sometimes math. It's about how you process language, not just reading. We talk all the time about the importance of finding who's for your to-do so you can focus on your strengths. That's where Fiverr comes in. 
It's an affordable solution that can help you dip your toe into buying back your time. I'll never forget the first time I discovered Fiverr and realized I could have people help me in my business for as little as $5. Whether you need graphics, design, videos, animation, even music, voiceovers, or cute drawing of your family for an upcoming gift. Discovering Fiverr was a game changer. Head over to rainmakerfamily.com slash deals to create your account and get your special hookup. Again, that's rainmakerfamily.com slash deals. So I've shared with you about dyslexia, what it means, some of the myths, and how it affected me as a kid. But I really want to get into how it's been a superpower in business. And looking back on a, my entrepreneur journey, I can really see how dyslexia has guided my pathway and how it's been actually really incredible for our business. So dyslexia people are very innovative and problem solvers. Um, we often excel at thinking outside of the box. And we're used to finding creative solutions to navigate the world um, that isn't always set up for a way of thinking. And I've seen that time and time again in my life that I am an overcomer. I think differently. And when I'm faced with a problem, I'm like, bring it on. You know, obviously, I'm like, I don't want all the problems, but I've learned to think differently. And it's been a huge um, superpower for us in our business. Another thing that I'm great at is big picture thinking. A lot of people with dyslexia are skilled at global or big picture thinking. They can grasp complex ideas and patterns quickly, which is crucial for strategy planning and understanding market trends. I'm a big picture visionary people. Like I see where Rainmakers is going. I see where my personal brand, it's not just if like the Rainmaker family show is going to be like a top charts podcast in every home. It's just a matter of when. Same thing goes with my Instagram. Like I see like over a million followers. I see the revenue coming in. I see the lives impact. Like I can see that. And that pattern recognition, that big picture makes me stay consistent. It's just like, I see the big picture. Therefore, I'm willing and capable of doing the baby steps in between because I'm not going to quit until I see that big picture turn into reality. And then this is one that's definitely true in my life. Um, dyslexia people are super creative. Um, it's linked to a high level of creativity. This can be a huge asset in roles that require innovation, such as a product development, marketing, and entrepreneurship. And you see that like all throughout, even in our wedding business, being able to see things creatively when we make product innovations in our Amazon business, and then again in marketing and entrepreneurship for Rainmakers. And then when I feel like it's super strong for me is um, dyslexia people have a lot of empathy and emotional intelligence. Um, and overcoming the challenges of dyslexia often leads to greater empathy and understanding of others. This is a key trait for leadership, team building, and customer relations. And this is probably like one of the top for me. Like I have emotional intelligence like nobody's business. And a lot of people call that intuition. I think God is the one who's bringing that intuition to me. And a lot of our big business decisions or key hires, almost all of them have come off of like intuition that I've strongly felt. Um, and Stephen often feels that way as well. But like I go off of that intuition and I'm to a place now where I know I can trust my intuition because look at where it's got me. Look at this proven track record. It's like that mom gut. It's like, it's, yeah, it's just like that incredible intuition that I lean into. And I think another strong suit of um, being dyslexic for me is that trait of leadership and team building. That is a huge part of my role in Rainmakers. I think when when Rainmakers first started, I was trying to focus all on our students and then on our team. And I felt really split. And I really focused my attention on our team and the key leaders because I know if I take care of our team leads, if I take care of our people who are working for us, who we are paying them a paycheck, they will take care of our people. And I know I can have empathy and support them at a super high level. And so that's come into play. And when I was learning about more of these traits um, with people with dyslexia, it, I don't know how to describe it other than like my heart just like leapt because I see myself in so many of these things that I'm sharing with you. 
Another one that goes hand in hand is like resilience and determination. Dealing with challenges that come with being dyslexic, there are so many. And that's really fostered this resilient, like, tendency that I have, this resilient determination. It's like I might get knocked down, but I'm going to pick myself up. And of course, like, I think, again, these are all characteristics that as, as a human we have, but it's been very strong in my own life. And I'm viewing it as a superpower. Something that kind of caught me by surprise that I didn't know about was dyslexic people have enhanced listening and narrative skills. Um, we're able and we prefer um, auditory learning. We often develop strong listening skills. We might be a good storyteller, which is essential for branding and compelling communication which is very true. Like I love listening to things. Um, and I think it's a strong skill set of ours that it, there's storytelling and being able to communicate in a different way. This is one that I'm continuing to learn how to do, especially in business. And that's uh, the ability to delegate, recognizing my own challenges as an individual um, and how I can adapt and delegate those tasks. This is why Steve and I like outsource your weaknesses and this just shows right here, like the importance of doing that, because there are things that I'm really good at um, that, again, are my superpower and there are things that aren't. And then one that I thought I will end with that is just so cool is my ability to have strong peripheral vision. Um, and some studies have even suggested that people with dyslexia have broader peripheral vision, which metamorphically translates into seeing a wider picture in business scenarios. Um, noticing opportunities or risks that others might miss. And I mean, if you look in at anything Steve and I have done, we have been willing to take risks when others didn't. I mean, I think about this house, this room that I'm sitting in right now recording a podcast. When we bought this house, it was at the beginning of the pandemic. And the owners, I feel like, felt like the world was ending and there was no way out. And I just saw this house and I was like, this is it. Like, this is a good opportunity. And I think a lot of people at that time were scared to do anything. And so that would have been a missed opportunity. So I just share with you some of my superpowers. Now I'm going to kind of share some of my tricks and tools that I use. And some of these I've been doing forever just because it worked for me. But now I can see the correlation how it's actually helped me um, as I'm an adult. And some of these things, regardless of if you have dyslexia or a different neurodivergent, I think they can help you too. So I need to stay organized to, in order to get things done. So I've always been a pen and paper and list girl. Um, and like my calendar is queen. So I have right here on my desk, this notebook, I'll get a new one soon. It's just a basic notebook with like sheets of paper. And I write down everything and I check things off and I have to stay organized. The next part is about communication. Like my communication style might be different. Like I prefer voice messages or Loom videos, and I always have. Um, if you're a friend of mine, you know that I like sending voice messages. I'm not one to send out lengthy paragraphs um, to people, even if like in my DMs, like I prefer to just do an audio message because the thought of having to write out all of my thoughts and go through and proofread and read it over multiple times is super daunting to me, and it's just so much faster to send a voice message. So. That's another reason why I do that. And here's a couple of tools that I've learned, even just in the small amount of research that I've done that have helped me to grow um, reps and really help me build confidence. So when Stephen and I first started podcasting and interviewed people, like I was super nervous because I hadn't done the reps. And what if somebody puts me on the spot or what if I don't know what to say? Uh, but now that we've been doing this for over two and a half years, podcasting and interviewing people has become way more comfortable because I've built the confidence. And so oftentimes I might like overanalyze a question or what if somebody says this to me or what if somebody asks me? And it honestly has to do with the fact that I just want to be really prepared. And a dyslexic person, I learned this recently on a podcast was like, sometimes we're asked a question and we literally don't have formulated words to like connect our brain almost like to our mouth of what we want to say. So I might get asked a question and put on the spot and usually I can like play it off, but sometimes I'll get like totally stumped and that really intimidates me. And so that's where like that preparation, like I can do things on the fly. We do lives all the time on the fly, but when it comes to specific training, like I need prep and I need reps 
um, so that I can feel confident. Like, I just want to give you a picture inside of my brain, like how some of this actually works and how like being on put on the spot, like I almost like freeze, but I'm not trying to or like I don't have words to formulate. So earlier today, um, I wanted Stephen to put something away that was left out. And I was like, oh, will you put that away when you're done? And what I was trying to say was, will you put the coffee maker away when you're done? But I literally, I didn't have words to the coffee maker. Like I could think about like what the color was, where it was, but I didn't have the words coffee maker. A couple more things that are really helpful for me. Obviously, Grammarly, I need that on my computer. Um, There are so many spelling errors. I remember the biggest thing when we were in the wedding industry, when I took over doing emails is I had this fear that I was going to send an email that would either be offensive or not make sense to a client. And so we installed Grammarly. And of course, like even to this day, when I send emails, there are grammar errors and I've just kind of learned to be okay with them and just know like sometimes an email is going to have the wrong spelling or it's going to be a tiny bit off. But at the end of the day, it's okay. So I think a mix of like having a tool, but also giving myself grace has been really good. Another thing is delegation and teamwork. Like I have had to learn so well to delegate. Like entrepreneurship has made me delegate even more. And I am up leveling this coming year even more of delegating, of using my words to communicate what I need. And it's become very powerful. Um, I'm super hands-on or love interactive learning. Like hand me a manual and try and read it. Like I'm done. I will throw that thing away in two seconds and be so frustrated. But if you actually sit down and show me how to do something, it's kind of like my camera when I was a photographer. Like I got so good at being a photographer because I practiced. I practiced over and over again. I took my camera with me everywhere. I took photos of my mom, of the bouquet from Farmer's Market, of my cat Mia. Like I took photos and that's what built my confidence is the repetition and practice, not reading a manual. Um, I love structured routines and checklists. I love that. Um, And something I've been rediscovering this last year, which makes sense, is I need a personalized workspace. Organizing the workspace to reduce distraction and improve efficiency. This might include having a clutter-free desk or using a specific type of lighting. And this has been huge because for the longest time, Stephen and I have shared an office. Like The space I'm sitting in right now is technically our shared office. But a while ago, we moved into this house, I built a studio or there was a structure that we created a studio for. It was mainly used for photos. And now it's transitioned into my office. And I would say about like nine or 10 months ago, I started working out in that space and I love it and I get so much more done. And when I come into this space that I'm sitting in now to report co- record podcasts, there's actually been some friction between Stephen and I because I need an organized space and I feel like I'm coming into his space because it really is his space now. And so in 2024, we're really working on and thinking through how can we recreate our podcasting setup to be conducive for both of us? Because right now, it's honestly is a point of friction in our working relationship and in our marriage. And so that's one big thing that I've learned about that like totally makes sense is like it's been an area of friction that we need to work on. In wrapping up, I want to shout out all my fellow entrepreneurs with dyslexia. You rock and you have amazing superpowers and I want to encourage you to lean into those. Um, I am also going to be doing a coaching call with a dyslexia coach expert in a couple of weeks. So I'm sure this episode will have a sequel and I'll be talking about it more and more as I learn more information. This episode today was just based off of my personal experience and how I'm rediscovering what it means to be an adult with dyslexia, specifically as an entrepreneur, what I've learned, what is working for me. So I'm excited once I have that call with her to share more about it with you. I'm sure I'll have some incredible takeaways. And maybe who knows, we'll have her on the show too. Um, But more than anything, I think that there are so many entrepreneurs that think differently, that have probably felt like an outsider most of their life, that have probably felt misunderstood for most of their life. I think a lot of entrepreneurs um, who are listening to the show, I think you can relate to that. I think that's probably why you got into entrepreneurship or desire to create a life with more freedom where you create the rules 
And I think that's a superpower of yours. And I just want to say, like, regardless of if you have dyslexia or a neurodivergent, like, I just want to say that the way that you think and the way that your mind has been created and how you've been wired is a beautiful thing. And sometimes people who don't understand you that might have good intentions uh, might put down your unique you, who make you you that are wired specifically to give and to create impact in this world. And I want to encourage you to lean into your giftings, lean into those superpowers that only you can do. And then all the other stuff that are frustrating, that's hard, that are tasks that you know you shouldn't be doing. I want to encourage you to delegate those and to outsource those. And as I head into this year, like I'm going to be looking for more ways on how I can do that so that I'm only focusing on my strengths. So I hope this episode was encouraging for you. Thank you for listening to the Rainmaker Family Show. If this resonated with you or hey, if you have any tips or tricks or you have dyslexia, feel free to send me a DM on Instagram. I love hearing from you and don't be afraid to share this with a friend who needs to hear it today. All right. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Rainmaker Family Show. Hey, if you are not a part of our Rainmaker Mastermind, we have a new opportunity for you to book a one-on-one -on -one strategy call with one of our Rainmaker coaches. If you want to get a call with them, see if it's a good fit for you to work with us to build a business that allows you to have time freedom and financial freedom. You can get that call at makeitrainmama.com slash podcast. That's makeitrainmama, M-O-M-M-A dot com slash podcast.